A risk and vulnerability assessment determines the nature and extent of a risk by analyzing potential hazards and assessing the vulnerability that could pose a potential threat or harm to people, property, livelihoods and the environment on which they depend. This can take the form of a single assessment or various assessments undertaken per sector. The IPCC proposed a formal conceptualization of vulnerability as a function of a system of exposure and sensitivity to climate stressors and capacity to adopt and cope with their impacts. Risk and vulnerability assessment is an important aspect of risk management and is typically performed on a regular basis to ensure that the entity being evaluated remains protected against emerging risks and vulnerabilities. Now when we know what risk and vulnerability assessment is, let's get familiar with the terms mostly used in risk and vulnerability assessment. So first, let's define what is a climate risk. Risk is defined as a function of the expected potential impacts of hazard of climate extremes, system vulnerability and exposure. The term risk is used to define the risk of natural variability and climate change. Next term used in risk and vulnerability assessment is climate hazard. Climate hazard is a physical process or event, hydrometeorological or oceanographic variable or phenomenon that can harm human health, livelihoods or natural resources. Here, it is important to know that hazard is not simply the potential for adverse effects. Furthermore, climate exposure is defined as the presence of people, livelihoods, species or ecosystems, environmental services and resources, infrastructure or economic, social or cultural assets in places that could be adversely affected by hazard. Finally, climate change vulnerability is the degree to which a system is suspectively to and enabled to cope with adverse effects of climate change, including climate change variability and extremes. Now when we are familiar with the terms mostly used in risk and vulnerability assessment, let's see some of the main reasons on why to make a risk and vulnerability assessment. A risk assessment helps create an awareness of different underlying hazards and risks to the city, municipality or company. This way cities, municipalities or companies can properly identify what or who in the organization is at risk and then see if there are any tools necessary to take care of those risks. Some of the examples of climate risks are extreme weather events, chronic heat waves, sea level rise, erosion and biodiversity loss. Vulnerability assessments also deal with understanding threats and managing them. Instead of looking at external threats like risk assessment do, a vulnerability assessment takes care of identifying internal vulnerabilities that could turn into threats. A vulnerability assessment defines, identifies, classifies and then prioritizes all the vulnerabilities that exist in city, municipality or company. Some of the examples of climate vulnerabilities are vulnerability of water and heat supply infrastructure due to floods and vulnerability related to human health issues due to city heat islands. Risk and vulnerability assessment can be developed based on specially explicit impact models or based on the indicator-based vulnerability assessment. Specially explicit impact models are a type of risk and vulnerability assessment that considers the geographical location and special distribution of hazards, threats and vulnerabilities. This approach recognizes that the impacts of risk event can vary depending on the location of the hazard and the location and nature of the threat. On the left, we can see risk and vulnerability assessment based on special explicit impact model. Here, we can see a baseline of assessment to vulnerability to draft in reference year, which is here 2014, and projections of expected future vulnerabilities. On the other hand, indicator best based risk and vulnerability assessment is a method used to evaluate the vulnerability of a system, organization or community to specific risk. In the approach, specific indicators or criteria are selected to represent the various components of vulnerability, such as exposure to hazards, resource available and the ability to cope with the recovery from risk.
The indicators are then quantified and used to evaluate the vulnerability of a system, organization or community. On the right, we can see an example of indicator-based risk and vulnerability assessment of extreme weather events. More information about the risk and vulnerability assessment is available in guidebook How to Develop a Sustainable Energy and Climate Action Plan SECAP, Part 2, based on Emission Inventory and Risk and Vulnerability Assessment. This guidebook is developed by the Joint Research Center and is publicly available.